Welcome to this tutorial on loops and conditional statements in which I assume that you know how to launch your Python environment either in your web browser or locally in a Jupyter Notebook or any other IDE. I will also assume that you know how to do it with errors and that you will know how to debug your code if something fails. That includes also that I assume that you know now about basic data types, that you know, for instance, what is a Boolean string and a number. I will also try to move a little bit less around in the camera to keep your learning experience more focused on Python. So I invite you now to open the Jupyter Notebook Pi03 PyLoop, which is in our course repository here. If you haven't cloned it yet, um, please do so if you want to work locally. Then in that PyLoop Jupyter Notebook, we have everything now to get started with conditional statements. So conditional statement basically means if else. So what happens if then do something and do something else if it, that doesn't happen. So we have an if statement here that is then test uh, that then test the condition. If the condition is true, it jumps here into the first section. If the condition is false, it will directly jump into the else uh, section if you did not define an else if. So let's have a look here at what this code block does. If we run it here, we define here a test to uh, a variable to test that is ice cream. Um, in the very first statement, it found that cream in variable to test is true. Um, so it will jump directly here in that indented section and will print what's in here and will ignore all the rest. If that is false now, then we'll and jump here to the second test here that is else if, because I defined it, it's not absolutely necessary, um, but here I defined it and we'll print then the second statement. So now it will then tell us it's cold ice cream, because it's ice huh? If nothing of these two statements holds true, so creamy and icy is not here in our string ice cream, then we'll jump into the else statement. Now let's have a look at the usage of operators. So just recall from the introduction, um, you, I've told you a little bit about operators, so comparison, comparable operators. What I will do here, I am defining a numbers, uh, number of scoops, so you can also use that as an input variable where you ask a user, enter a number of scoops that you want, maybe an ice cream vending machine. Um, this should be then an integer variable, and if that number of scoop, um, scoops is smaller than zero, it should directly jump here into the first section. If the number of scoops is smaller than four, it will jump here into that section that is a nested uh, if statement. So if it is equal then or equal to one, it will print here one is better than nothing. If it is two or three, because we're dealing here with integers, so there shouldn't be another option to get in here, it will print you that is reasonable. If it is not smaller or equal than uh, zero and it is larger than four, it will jump here into uh, that section. So let's run that little code block and where did we get to? Well, we entered three. So we are in that section. Please take your time here to play a little bit around, um, change the number of scoops to any integer value and look at what happens to with the if statements. Let's get to another very useful tool that are loops and I'm going to start here with a for loop. It's quite intuitive to learn that and if I run that code block here, what does it do? Well, I defined here a range and that range is basically a function, a built-in basic function of Python that starts here iterating at the first entry, goes to the maximum that is here 8 and uses here the 
third argument as the step width. So if I write here for e in range and then I go here into the next indented section, then in every step of the loop, Python's gonna here print, um, jump here and print the value of e. So 0, 2, 4, 6. I invite you here now to change a little bit the range values and look at what happens with that um, little for loop. You probably don't want to go here to very high numbers with very low increments because that, uh, depending on the power of your computer, might even crash it. So, um, uh, is there a reason? <laughs> uh, the second example that I'm showing here, the code block, is again a list of flavors. So recall just the introduction on data types. I already created a list of flavors. It's basically similar here. I have again three flavors and I'm printing here these three flavors um, by using an index of the list and then going toward the end of the flavor list here by uh, defining a range that is the length of the flavor list, huh? and then I'm calling here in every iteration print flavors of index. And after that, I'm adding here that else statement, so I can combine a for with an else statement to uh, tell here end of the first loop, while that is rather the end of the second loop to be precise. Huh? So that is a little bit uh, complicated. Maybe you might, uh, maybe you might say here, and you're absolutely right. So instead of using just that more complex uh, statement here for printing every list element, you can also directly just write here for e in flavors. So for element in flavors, so the list of flavors, uh, it will do that here. I didn't add to the else statement, so we won't get to the end of the first loop. So please again, take your time, play a little bit. You may want to modify here the flavors list When you are iterating, um, you can also use both the number of this. Uh, uh, sorry, when you're iterating on lists, you can use both the index where you are and the list element. So there was a reason for why I was using the index in the first uh, list here, and then uh, in the first loop here, and then just the elements in the second loop. The reason might be that you have different elements in or different lists or tuples in one um, functional piece of your code and you always want to get to element number zero one maybe of your um, of your list or tuple and in that case you not only want them to have the entry of your list you also want to have then the number of the entry where you exactly are. And for doing that, you can use the built-in enumerate function in Python. So that here basically prints you the iteration step, so the list element and um, the, the iteration step. So actually the other way around, the other way around in terms of what I want to tell here as output. So you have telling you the list element number zero. So I'm putting in the list element. Huh? I invert it here. It doesn't matter um, in the, in the direction that I'm using here, but it was uh, what matters here for printing is the uh, arrangement or the sequence in which I'm calling here the format function. The other types of loops that you may want to use are while loops and a while loop basically just tests a condition and while that condition is true it runs through it and once the condition is not true anymore it will go to an else statement. You don't exactly need again the else statement um, but you can use it similar to the else if statement. So, Let's go to an example here where we define a count, like countdown. And as long as our countdown is, our count variable is larger than seven, we're gonna reduce one of the count. 
So that here is an additional um, operator. That means it reduces always just one from the uh, from that variable. So that here is the same as I would write count equals count minus one in every loop. Huh? Can do the same with plus equals or multiply or divide. If you run that code here, it will print you the countdown, but it will stop at correctly seven because that was your our condition to break the loop. When you're using while loops, I strongly recommend here to have a kind of emergency exit because a while loop can be very vulnerable in the sense of it turns eternally. So if the condition here never becomes false, your loop will run and run and run and run. So that's why you might have here some counter counting variable in here and that it breaks if the count is larger than three. And that is what happens here. Let's still have a look at a broader example where I am using try and accept statements from the errors and debugging section. I am using for and if statements and I'm creating a little ice cream vending dialog. So I'm defining here again a number of scoops, a favorite flavor. I'm defining here a dictionary of a size and scoops. So that here would be the size, meaning size of one scoop would be small, to two that would be medium. You have here the price that is then associated with scoops. Um, then you have your print statement with some little tweaking. We've got here that backslash n that will call and create a new line. You will see here the number of the scoops that you can uh, that you defined above. Now you can use here the uh, the size. And the price variables is uh, to convert them to a string. If they are not correctly defined, you will get a very value, value error. Sorry. And then you can start here your dialog. So first you are addressing here the ice cream vendor, then the ice cream vendor res responses uh, re responds to you, um, and the ice cream vendor might ask you uh, if she can guess your favorite flavor. And you should say stop when it is correct. So you run here through your loop and at some point it will stop. I will not start now that code block, um, I, but I really invite you to play with it. It's a combination of many things that you have learned so far. Um, you can vary here the size of scoops. You can also test what happens if you're using not an integer variable, maybe a, a string variable, you can also try to define the scoops as an input, as a user input, and many different options here for defining the prices or the sizes of your ice cream. Finally, there's still the hint if you want more um, practice, have a look here at the Hydraulics 1D exercise. That is then also a little bit more water related than ice cream examples. Thanks for watching this video.